Has there ever been a cave rescue quite like this one? The Thai military allied with an international team of volunteers searching until the lost boys were found and daringly rescued in remote mountains in northern Thailand. We're still piecing the story together in all its inspiring heroic detail. So much of the drama happened in the dark, out of sight. But it begins with a haunting image in silhouette. Kids' bikes chained up in a row at the cave entrance. Football boots, shin pads, left behind with no sign of their owners. The date, Saturday, June 23rd. And this was the missing party, what we can now refer to as the miraculously lucky 13, the wild boars football team plus their young coach. They went missing after match practice. They'd explored this particular cave before, but were apparently trapped by a sudden monsoon flood. Water and more water. In came the piping and the pumps and Thai Navy SEALs. As the water continued to rise, the equipment for a serious diving operation was transferred by hand and by hoist deep into the cave. Where were the boys? Could they be reached in time? The place is known as the Big Cave for a reason. Almost seven miles of limestone tunnels and recesses, nooks and crannies. Anxious, distressed relatives could only wait and offer prayers. I, I cannot explain that how wrong, but every minute is uh, important. The cave known as Tam Luang was mapped by French divers in the 1980s. It's among the longest in Thailand. But it's the first few miles of the cave that concern us here. The most recent survey was carried out by this man, Vern Unsworth, a British caver who has a home in the area. His immediate advice was call in British experts. We got the Thai authorities to, to understand that you know, they needed expert divers out here. Um, you know, because cave diving is it's specialist. Nilvis, you know, it's like diving with, you can't see three inches in front of your face. And um, <clears throat> they needed world-class divers and that's what we got. Rick Stanton on the left, a retired fireman from Coventry and his diving partner, John Volenthan, an IT consultant from Bristol. In cave diving, they're pretty much as good as it gets. At the request of the Thai Command Center, they were flown out from Britain. On the ground, they almost passed unnoticed. Just two guys in dark shorts, T-shirts and Wellington boots. The British divers made their first exploratory dive on Wednesday, June 27th, four days after the boys went missing. The challenge was immediately obvious. Water, the color of cold coffee, almost no visibility. Swimming against a torrent of water, the engorged stream that runs through the cave. The divers were able to lay down a crucial guide rope and on the seventh day of diving, on Monday, July the 2nd, they found the boys perched on a rocky ledge and were met by an unforgettable chorus of little voices. How, how many of you? 13? Brilliant. What day is it, the boys ask? Monday. Monday. You have been here? 10 days. 10 days. You are very strong. We we are happy too. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. So where you come from? England, UK. Oh. Oh, indeed, a nice surprise. England, home to Manchester United and Arsenal, some of their favourite teams. The euphoria among relatives outside was immediate. The British team, some eight British divers in all, were warmly embraced, hugs all around. They'd brought hope out of the darkness.
The boys were joined on their ledge by Navy SEALs, given food and emergency foil blankets and medicine. They sent messages to their parents, wrote letters that were carried out. Their coach had helped keep their spirits up during their ordeal in their tiny refuge, less than half the size of a tennis court. Coach Ake, as they call him, was sat at the back. He'd been a Buddhist monk in his youth and taught them to meditate to pass the time. On Friday, July the 6th, tragedy struck. One of the Thai divers, Saman Kunan, lost consciousness as he was replacing oxygen tanks and died. He was 38, a retired Thai Navy SEAL. He had volunteered to join the rescue effort just five days earlier. His death changed the mood in the cave. Now there was a growing urgency about a rescue. We know it happened over three successive days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, July 8th, 9th and 10th. Thai Navy SEALs have released footage of it. The boys carried out on so-called scared military stretches, wrapped in foil for the last mile or so. We glimpsed a face here and there. Each boy regularly checked on the way out by doctors. But the most dramatic and daring part of the rescue happened off camera in the submerged part of the cave system. These divers, you know, they, they went in on three consecutive days. That's, that's tough. You know, four, five, six hours each time. You know, in not so nice conditions, but superhuman. We know the boys were sedated in some way. An Australian cave diver, Dr. Richard Harris, was part of the team. He's an anaesthetist. You have to understand that some of these kids couldn't swim and they've been put into cold, cold water and, you know, with wet suits on, f full face mask, you know, alien to them. So it was, it was the only way. The most important thing was to have a, a full face mask, which we acquired on site with positive pressure to enable them to breathe and to relax them enough to not feel any anxiety during the process. It seems then that the boys were somehow escorted out one by one by pairs of divers before being put into stretchers. The UK, Australia, Denmark, the divers list inside the cave indicated that they came from all over the world. But there's still a general reticence about talking about what each of them did. Another pair of British divers, Chris Jewell on the left and Jason Mallison, were certainly involved in escorting the boys out, but weren't prepared to reveal much more. Myself and Jason Mallinson came out after Rick and John and our role was to help transport the boys underwater through the cave to bring them out. And not forgetting the anonymous quartet of Thai Navy SEALs who'd kept the boys company on the ledge for seven days. They were the last out after the boys. Just to get any of them out alive would have been a miracle, but to get 13 out of 13 won't happen again, it's the biggest miracle ever. After the rescue, a sense of overwhelming relief and gratitude on the streets, you could see it in their faces. Something wonderful had happened. A salute for an ambulance taking one of the boys to hospital. This woman didn't have to say anything to let us know how she felt. Her nephew had been saved. <laughs> From his hospital bed and still in quarantine, the youngest and apparently the last of the kids to be rescued paid his respects to his parents. All relatives were kept tearfully behind glass until medical checks are complete. The boy is 11 years old, but has the longest name in the team. Here he's glimpsed in the cave. His nickname is Tutun. In his letter to his parents, he urged them not to worry and to get ready his favorite fried chicken. His father was simply drained by the ordeal, but eternally grateful his son had survived. <laughs> ลูกเราแข็งแรงดีอ่ะเราเต้นใจ
7วันแล้วนะครับเรารู้สึกแล้วเราก็สึกภูมิใจในตัวของเขาด้วยว่าเขาสามารถอดทน13 will not be a lucky number anymore. <laughs> we now keenly await to hear the boys' version of events and Coach Ake's. Nick Glass, CNN, with the extraordinary story of how the wild boars and their coach were lost and found and safely rescued. <laughs>